Hello, uh, this is Robert again, and I wanted to talk finally about this guy. This is the uh, Yamaha B2 Natural Sound Stereo Power Amplifier. From uh, This was made in the late 1970s. So it's a 40-year-old amplifier, yet uh, has a remarkably seductive sound. And it has a magic secret, which puts it a cut above most other products from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and on. Basically, in the mid-70s, the uh, Japanese were looking for a competitive edge. And two companies, both uh, Yamaha and Sony, looked into a type of output device called a vertical FET, or VFET. And uh, it's an amazing device. It's a solid-state device that sounds like a tube. Uh, VFETs, if you actually look at their characteristics curves, the curve resembles a triode uh, very much. Uh, and it has, VFETs have the same sort of uh, simple distortion mechanisms that triodes have, which means they're, uh, they sound very pleasant to the human ear. The B2... Uh, is Yamaha's next to the top of the line. There was a B1 amplifier, which uh, I believe used a, a, a greater integration of VFETs in it. The B2 uses only uh, standard JFETs on the input and the VFETs on the output with uh, bipolar transistors in the middle. Uh, Sony did make uh, several uh, VFET amplifiers, but for some reason theirs were not that rugged and haven't held up well. So it's very difficult to find a Sony amp with the original VFETs in it. It's getting hard after 40 years to find a uh, Yamaha one with the original VFETs. And I was very lucky to find this one. Uh, uh, usually I have the worst luck buying stereo equipment on VFETs. I tend to find the odd unit that's been struck by lightning or something and is being sold as sounds good. This one, uh, the fellow said that it uh, was all intact, had just been serviced and was in good shape. And uh, he wanted to sell it before the uh, the pandemic uh, shutdown came down on everyone, and uh, knocked fifty bucks off the price for me. Uh, actually, made an offer to me with fifty bucks off, and. I took the bait, and boy, I was sweating bullets during the time it uh, made its way to me as to whether I'd open it up and find just regular MOSFETs inside, which is the usual fix if someone's blown the VFETs. But uh, this has the original VFETs in it. It is in well-used condition. Uh, it shows every year of its 40-year life. Uh, and uh, as you'll see, I've done a few mods to it, and one thing I'm going to do today is undo one of them. So we'll talk about that in a bit. Right now I'm going to turn it around. Excuse me. Okay, this is the uh, back side of the Yamaha. And uh, you might notice, if you're familiar with these, you'll notice two mods that I've done. The original power cord came out of this little socket here. Oh, let's get a light on that. Excuse me. There, that helps. And as you can see, it, uh, I've cut it off. 
uh oh the heat just came on but i've cut that off and uh disconnected it uh, i just left the original strain relief in there and this uh amplifier had a uh, unswitched ac outlet on it Let's see if i can just leave that there there okay trying to get my lighting worked out here and what i did is i took removed the unswitched outlet uh spent about five minutes with a nibbling tool and i had a place where i could mount an iec socket which is a the name of these common three pin detachable power cord sockets and uh, that allows me to use any type of power cord I want uh, I even bought a giant uh, big ugly audiophile power cord and never I've never used it it's just so absurd I can't even see using it it's but the other thing I did was remove the uh, original uh, speaker connectors, which uh, were an unusual type. It wasn't a traditional binding post. It was this odd uh, clamp type thing where uh, you put the, the wire in and close this, screw down this clamp on it internally. And it would only accept bare wire, which was kind of limiting. I've gotten kind of spoiled by having uh, banana plugs that are easy to attach and detach. Anyway, there's this uh, wonderful company in Switzerland uh, called speaker underscore terminals dot com. And they sell upgrade kits for audiophiles who want to upgrade their older amplifiers and that's what I've done I ordered a, this kit for the uh, Yamaha uh, I saw uh, they offered everything from classic pioneer receivers and on but uh, these arrive they're nice brass plated with gold uh, their solder terminals on the back they mounted up in the original mounting holes no problem at all I've yet to find any uh, nice upgrades for the original power jacks and these mount directly into a circuit board that's right here behind it mounts on the back panel so it's a little harder to uh, squeeze something modern in there I'm still working on that but anyway one thing I did when I mounted the IEC jack uh, there's a ground connection here which is uh, the only ground connection the unit originally had the original power cord had only two connectors the third connector on the IEC outlet is a ground and silly me I ran a ground cable from here over to where this grounds and as is usually the case, that set me up for ground loops. And I had to float the uh, ground with a cheater plug. And it just added to the grounding complexity of the system. So one thing I'm going to do today is remove that ground connection. I'm also going to inspect the capacitors on the uh, main circuit board and see if uh, they're in good condition. So that's uh, where we'll uh, go with this. Okay, so we have the uh, back panel down. I've removed the uh, offending ground wire here. It's out, done a little bit of cleanup. And what we have here is this is the power board. You can see the output relays. And in front of that is a board that has uh, that the filter caps are mounted to. And just above, there are four filter caps. And above them are the uh, bridge rectifiers. So this is a true dual mono amp. 
Now the interesting thing is uh, there's another circuit board in the front here which is strictly for the uh, meter as well as uh, these little boards here for the speaker volume control and uh, speaker selection. I've thought about bypassing all that but I just don't want to tear into this amp that much. Because it's work, it's sounding awesome as it is and I want to kind of keep it as stock as I can. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to give you a glimpse into this amplifier. This amplifier sounds far better than anything from the 70s should sound. I mean, my memories of amplifiers from the 60s and 70s, I should say, solid state amplifiers from the 60s and 70s is mainly negative. <laughs> they usually sounded uh, big, brash, bold, and uh, usually had an obnoxious edge to the treble. Um, they didn't sound very real or lifelike to my ears. And uh, one of the things uh, that really surprised me, I expected this amplifier to be very mediocre sounding, uh, slow, kind of stodgy. Uh, you know, I expected a little uh, smoothness on the output section, and that is definitely there. It has kind of a uh, bright lit from within sound. It's very detailed, very low distortion but it has the smoothest treble of any solid state amplifier I have heard to date. And uh, the only thing that approaches is my heavily modified Sunfire amplifier, which has been uh, completely recapped with uh, polypropylene and polystyrene film types. Uh, that's a very mellow amplifier in the treble, but nothing like this. You can tell that there's a fundamental change or difference in terms of smoothness. It's just like this amplifier is inherently smooth, whereas the others are uh, ill-mannered but uh, kind of reined in to some manner of behaving just through uh, throwing a sheer amount of quality capacitance at them. So uh, this has been uh, my reference amplifier for the last month or three. And uh, <laughs> it's odd. I, before then, I was mainly using my ADCOM GFA 5800 uh, Nelson Pass Design MOSFET power amplifier as uh, my reference amp. Uh, it sounds warmer than this amplifier in the uh, upper bass, lower, mid-range. This amplifier doesn't have that bump down there for some reason. Possibly due to the large number of bipolars in the signal path, I'm not sure. But uh, the ADCOM can't match this in the treble. Uh, even though it's pretty much an all MOSFET amplifier beginning to end, there's still a bit of edge on the treble. Now, I'm not saying it's in perfect shape either. I, it's uh, one of my used eBay finds, and uh, I had to do a lot of uh, uh, recapping on it. But uh, this currently has uh, been my favorite amp. The, I guess at some point uh, I'm going to get uh, the uh, Nelson Pass uh, B1 buffer crossover board from DIY Audio and uh, set up a uh, biamp system with this on the uh, MagnaPan treble panels and uh, uh, the... Uh, ADCOM or uh, the Aragon on the bass. They're both uh, 
pretty punchy, uh, high current amplifiers in the bass. This amplifier, uh, it sounds very quick, detailed. Uh, I would say its weak point is uh, that it doesn't have a huge amount of heft in the bass. It's very light and uh, quick on its feet, but it doesn't do heft very well. Anyway, uh, but uh, all is forgiven when you hear that treble, when you hear that detail, and you think, this amplifier is freaking 40 years old. Everything else I've heard from that era, uh, sounds like garbage. <laughs> Pardon me, with the exception of uh, some tube units. But uh, interestingly enough, uh, I worked on Yamaha amplifiers for a year, back in Houston, Texas. And I did a number of the M series, uh, mainly a whole lot of really obnoxious home theater uh, receivers, but uh, occasionally I'd get to work on a uh, Yamaha amplifier. And uh, they were nice pieces, but I never really liked the sound much. Uh, they, Yamaha carried the natural sound moniker over into other amplifiers in their line, but I think uh, they ceased to be natural sounding when they uh, quit using the VFETs. And back to our history lesson, uh, the VFET amplifiers were around for a couple years, but they never really sold well, oddly enough. And perhaps the sound uh, was considered too soft for the day, Perhaps the folks used to solid state sound back then found them to be uh, lacking in boldness and brashness. I don't know. But uh, to me, uh, uh, that smooth treble is just magic. And uh, yeah, I feel very lucky to have found this uh, dear old thing and uh, that it's uh, behaved itself so well. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm starting to run on here, so I'm going to uh, end this uh, video. Thank you for watching, and I appreciate you uh, tuning in to my channel. Good night.